There is a major visual element of spaceships that gives them life, a kind of heartbeat and breathing pattern, if you will. In our Starship Geek communities, we've come to call these special blinking lights blinkies. Blinkies include all manner of beacon lights, strobe lights, navigation lights, and perhaps even formation lights. And boy, there's a lot of nitpicking and confusion on this issue. I've even made some innocent mistakes about this that I'd like to correct, and it will be apparent why these mistakes are made later on in this video. In both aviation and sea navigation, these lights have specific uses, standards, and rules. In fact, colored lanterns on ships of sail have used these navigation light standards for centuries already, so this is a time-honored tradition. To some degree, Star Trek, especially in the original Star Trek into the Next Generation era, the marine and aviation guidelines for these lights have been followed, mostly quite consistently. In other sci-fi, such as Star Wars, we do see blinkies, but there's no consistent rules for these. For human-centric spaceships, such as the Enterprise from Star Trek, it makes perfect sense to borrow from aviation and marine navigation. Perhaps for non-human starships, they may follow different guidelines. Let's break down how these blinkies are used on Star Trek ships and how closely they follow either real-life aerial navigation rules or sea navigation rules. The human eye is most sensitive to one color in particular, and that is green. But our eyes also catch yellow, orange, and reds very quickly. So in the original series, the Enterprise follows a well-thought-out pattern. Here in this case, I'm using my own model, a somewhat retro-futurism version of the original Enterprise. I have followed Matt Jeffries' original prescription for the Blinkies. Matt Jeffries designed the Enterprise, and guess what? He was an airplane pilot, so it totally makes sense that he would follow the aerial guidelines for lighting. The standard European rules of the air, or CIRA, dictate that there must be a green and red navigation light, as seen here on the Enterprise. Green on the right and red on the left. This is also consistent with sea navigation rules of red the port light, starboard the green. And then a center white light. This is often near the back of an aircraft and above the red and green lights. On seagoing vessels, this could be on the bow for small boats or the masthead for larger ships or sailboats or both, or somewhere in the center of the ship and above the red and green lights. These are all designated navigation lights, or I hear some people just call them nav lights and indicate the general orientation of the ship or aircraft and which way it's moving. On the original Enterprise, here these lights blink every two seconds or so. This is consistent with aircraft, however on seagoing vessels these lights would not normally blink. Other than nav lights on the saucer, there doesn't seem to be any other blinkies on the original Enterprise according to what we see on film. However, on my model I have taken creative liberties and placed a beacon light on the top of the bridge and on the ventral section of the secondary hull, as well as fast blinking strobes on the back of the nacelles. This is also consistent with aircraft, which all have a red beacon light on the top and the bottom of the fuselage, which are officially called beacons. And then there are strobes. These are bright flashing lights to really let you know where that aircraft is. And these are mostly used on the runway during takeoff or landing and sometimes while taxiing in the airport. So strobes are only used in certain situations. I only added these strobes on the nacelles here because like you really don't want to be anywhere near the end of these warp nacelles, even in a spacesuit, like for possible radiation and heat problems and such. So these strobes are saying, watch out, radiation and heat are here. Another thing I got, well, I wouldn't say wrong, but different than the original series of the lights just below the shuttle bay. On the original Enterprise model, there are red, green, and some yellow stripes, but these do not seem to follow any real-world guidelines that I'm aware of. On my model, however, I put green on the left and red on the right, so did I make a boo-boo there? Well, not necessarily, because there's also a guideline for buoy colors in sea navigation. And to understand and remember this, you simply say to yourself, red right returning. In other words, you keep the red light to the right of your vessel, or to the starboard, and the green to port, and that means you are being guided into shore, returning or coming home, red right returning. And this would work here as an indicator for shuttlecraft returning to the mothership. 
But honestly, the blinkies on this particular Enterprise that I created here are a little bit more like the blinkies that appear on the refit Enterprise first seen in Star Trek The Motion Picture. And this is where even I have made some mistakes though. The refit Enterprise also follows the red and green aerial navigation guidelines. The problem is that on film, this is often screwed up by certain compositing effects. As these vessels are filmed in front of green screens, and sometimes the green lights appear white or even reddish, in my last video about every external feature of the refit Enterprise, I saw this and mistakenly made these port and starboard lights on the saucer white, as they appear on film, and called them formation lights, not navigation lights. However, they actually are red and green, and blink very much like an aircraft's lights do. In addition, it has red beacon lights, one near the bridge, and one on the ventral section of the secondary hull. There are also blinkies on the nacelles, and in my model it seemed logical to put one on top and one on the bottom, although on film it seems they may only be on the top of the nacelle. Also, these may be red and green as well, but the compositing of the film washes the colors out. There seems to be something like strobe lights near the docking port just after the bridge. I speculate that these may only be on to indicate that the docking port is expecting an incoming shuttle to dock here like what we saw with the Spock shuttle in Star Trek The Motion Picture, which would give these strobe lights a logical function. But on film, they seem to be constantly blinking or strobing, whether there is an incoming shuttle or not. Finally, this Enterprise duplicates self-illumination as seen on commercial aircraft. These spotlights illuminate the ship name, registry number, and side chevron. For aircraft, these are called logo lights. Commercial aircraft also have lights that illuminate the edges of the wings, this is so that the flight crew can visually check for icing on the leading edge of the wings. The Refit Enterprise sort of does that here with the pylons. Unfortunately, these kinds of self-illumination lights are not as well done on later versions of iconic starships in Star Trek. I should note that in Star Trek III, the Grissom and the Excelsior are still consistent with their light colors and positioning, except that the red and green navigation lights tend to stay on rather than blink, very much like seagoing vessels. When we fast forward to the next generation era, the same format for Federation ships is there. Here I'm using the Mbinga hospital ship model, which is a FASA game design in the TNG era, only because I've not yet built an Enterprise D model of my own, but here we see blinking navigation lights and red beacon lights. However, the same compositing issues that whitewash the colors in the original movies were present in the Next Generation era on film as well, until the digitally remastered Next Generation was available, and there we can easily distinguish the nav light colors. Also the red and green nav lights on the aft secondary hull of the Enterprise D do not blink, very much like a seagoing vessel. Now since the end of the 2000s era of Star Trek, there is no consistent nav light pattern sadly. Sometimes there are blinkies, sometimes not, sometimes it's green on both sides, sometimes all white, it's all over the place. Now let's touch briefly on non-federation ships, for example the Klingon Katinga class cruisers have a red beacon light near the base of the boom section. There is another red beacon light on the ventral section of the main hull. These beacons are very much like the beacon light seen on aircraft, and this bright red beacon light seems to be a signature feature on all Klingon ships. At least on the Katinga, there are not any other blinkies as far as we can tell, but other Klingon ships follow a similar pattern even into the next generation era. And for some reason, I often misremember there being blinkies on the nacelles of these Klingon ships, which is why I put strobes on the nacelles of my version of the older D7 Battlecruiser, well, mostly just because it looks cool. Now, the eyes of aliens may recognize certain colors more than humans. Dogs, for example, see yellows and blues much easier. Sometimes on my Romulan ships, I put yellow and blue blinkies on the ship to match Starfleet's red and green blinkies, but this comes mostly from my own headcanon. Keep in mind that some spacecraft in the real world are already using red and green nav lights. These are especially helpful on the right side of Earth's orbit during docking operations, and are used by the Dragon, Cygnus, and HTV cargo spacecraft that dock with the International Space Station. So really in any space sci-fi where humans are the predominant operators of spacecraft, it makes a lot of sense to follow these nav light guidelines. So, if you're a fan of designing starships, especially Starfleet ships, 
It's a nod to artistic tradition to follow the seagoing or aerial navigation guidelines. And if you're a visual effects artist who just happens to be working for Star Trek, please, please remember, us Starship nerds want blinkies. Good blinkies that make sense. So make the blinkies. Thank you for watching Space Friends, and say in the comments if you think uh, blinkies in sci-fi should be standard, especially in Star Trek, or how blinkies might be used in other sci-fi universes, and what their meaning might be. If you want to support the channel, you can at patreon.com forward slash resurrected, and be sure to give this video a like and a share. Until next time, Space Friends.